Right, good morning, welcome back. Okay, now in the last few videos, the eagle-eyed among you would have spotted this lurking in the background without anything being said. So today, let's do a little intro to it, tell you a bit more about it and what I'm gonna do with it. Okay, if you don't know what this is and you've never seen one of these before, and I can't think there's many of you, it's a shot blasting cabinet. Now what you do, it's a sealed cabinet. You open up the lid, put inside a piece of rusty metal that you want to clean up. Inside there, there's a quantity of grit or sand in the bottom. There's a little blowgun in there. You connect up an air supply, you put your hands in through the holes, pick up the blowgun, and you blast that gritty media all over that piece of rusty metal, and it takes the rust off and cleans it up and prepares it for all manner of different processes afterwards. Powder coating, painting, chroming, polishing, whatever it might be. It's a fantastic way to clean up pieces of decrepit old metal. And doing what I do in here, there's plenty of them. So rather than just talk about it, which is really boring, I'm gonna hook it all up, connect the air supply, plug it all in, stick some metal inside there. I've got loads of bits and pieces to clean up. We'll do a few demonstrations and see what we can do with it. See what it can actually achieve. Okay, a blast cabinet is extremely air hungry. They have a very high CFM, which is the cubic feet per minute requirement. Now, once you can feed that with a decent compressor, it also needs to be a dry air supply. It mustn't have damp moisture and condensation in the airline. Now that's okay in regular air tools, as long as you oil them, that's okay. But a dry air supply is essential for a blast cabinet, because if you're sending moist, condensated air into that blast media, it clumps together, blocks up the gun and stops play. So a little water trap is essential as well for a blast cabinet, as it is with painting and spraying and all other things. And you don't need a big fancy one on the wall, that's okay if you wanna do that, but a little inline one, cheap and effective, and a decent quality compressor also means I can do all manner of other things. I can run air tools on this because it's beefy enough to keep up because all air tools have a high CFM. I can pump my lift up with it rather than having to pump with my foot for hours on end. And also in the long-term future, I can run a spray gun and rig up a small paint booth in here and I can do my own spraying without leaning on my neighbor's kindness to do it. Anyway, we've got the air supply. Let's hook it up and see what's next. Okay, what to put in the machine? Got the cabinet ready, got the air supply. What media do you actually pour in it to start blasting? Well, I listened to the advice of a few of you out there. I asked a few questions. I'm trying to learn this new adventure. And the best advice I've had is for the first and for the general use, silica sand. Straightforward kiln dried silica sand. Also that's recommended on the instructions for that machine. So I'm very happy to be using that generally and most of the time. Secondly, I've got this. This is glass shot straightforward, super fine powdered glass. It's not sharp, it's little round glass beads, microscopic, they're measured in microns or something, they're so fine. If you drop a pebble in that, it ripples like water. So they're super fine glass beads, and that's gonna be good for leaving a lovely satin finish on shiny surfaces, but without actually ripping into it. So that's a little bit for later on. Today, I'm gonna to use the sand. I'm gonna see if I can take all this rust off and see what I can do to some of the bits of scrap I've got in my scrap box and what sort of effects that has, and get some general practice. Anyway, that's enough chat for now. Let's get on with it.
Right, the next bits, I want to actually see what they're going to do to these bits of metal. This is an old weld exercise. You know when you're setting up your welding machine and you test the settings and whatnot? That's a bit of super rusty steel. I want to see what it makes of that. Uh, next to it, this is a piece of Harley Davidson fuel tank that I chopped out for a project. You might remember it. That's got a, a scuffed finish from a polishing wheel or a grinder. I want to see if it takes out those scuff marks and makes it nice and smooth, because if it does that, then I know that it's another process I can add to finishing metal to make a nice job. So let's see if it takes the grinder marks out. Secondly is this. This is an old rack I bought in an auto jumble for one pound. It's just an old metal rack made by somebody in their house probably. It's got brazed together joints with brass. It's painted with hammerite by the look of it with a shovel. It's just hideous, but I'm gonna see if it cleans it all up. That'll be next. And then there's this. This is a gear shift change for a Harley Davidson, my old diner, and it's got chrome over aluminium and it's all pickled and blistered up really badly. Nasty because it always goes under your skin, super sharp. You've seen this when a custom part starts to rust and corrode. Chrome should not be put over aluminium, but when it does, you can see it just doesn't last very long. So I'm gonna see if the sandblaster will take all this flaky old chrome off completely and get it back to aluminium so I could then polish it. And finally, just for a laugh, I'm gonna see what sort of finish it leaves to this skanky old scrap disc. This is a scrap disc. I'm gonna make a clock or something out of it in the future. But I'm gonna take all the lines and the marks and the scuzz off it again and see what sort of finish it makes. So let's get started. Five more bits to do. Right, and finally, I'm gonna give this old scrap brake disc a go in the sandblaster and see what sort of finish I get. I'll do half of it so you can see the contrast. This will be the last one. Right, okay, by way of a verdict today, just show you these different pieces. That's the first bit, rusty old piece of mild steel. A couple of seconds later, silky lovely. I'm amazed at the smoothness. This I would have thought would come out with an etched finish, like a peppered finish from sandblasting, but not a bit of it. That's absolutely silky, smooth, and perfect. You could put etch primer on that, top coat, boom, lovely finish, straight away. And that's what it started like. Fantastic, really happy with that. Here's a better example of it. That's the rusty old piece. I did it down the middle to show you the game of two halves. Silky, there's just, if you could have feely vision, that's lovely. This piece of aluminium, that's come up even better. All I did with that was use it to take this black powder coat stuff off. It took a long while, it's a bit of a process, but eventually it gets it all off nice and clean. And the nice thing is it doesn't etch the weld. It leaves that weld looking natural and untouched. It's a really nice look. You could just clear coat that with a satin lacquer if you wanted to keep it looking anodized, or you could mirror polish it, whatever you like. The other thing was this, I really was hoping that I could etch the chrome off this or blast the chrome off it and all the flaky bits would disappear, but I'm afraid not a bit of it. It just laughed at me. In fact, the bit that I did, one little square inch, I laid it on for ages, all it did was that. It's gonna took the silver off down to the yellow, which I guess is the nickel underneath but it didn't take it off altogether. This, now I used it on this piece for paint removal. I was wondering whether it would take the paint off all this easy and quick. 
It did, but it wasn't easy and quick. That took a long time and it hasn't got it all off either. This stuff is probably hammerite or something, so I probably don't get any harder than that, but it did still take 99% of it off with a little bit of persistence. So it does that too. This disc is gonna be a wall clock or a piece of wall art or a doorstop or something. I'm not gonna use this on a bike. That's great. It's took out all that scuzz and muck off the bottom and it's left that lovely gray finish on the top. And what I think I might do with this is do the rest of it, both sides, and chrome it. And then a chrome disc, which will look really shiny, a little black silver clock in the middle, that'll look fantastic. But another day. Now, that is it for today. I've had a fantastic time doing this. All of this and the blast booth, compressor, and the polisher, and the grinder, it's all in preparation for the next project, which we will roll onto the bench next week. So literally at the end of this week, First few days in June, we will roll the next bike in. I'll take it in the church first of all, show you what it is, we'll have a little ride on it, bring it back here, chuck it on the lift, and we'll show you what we're gonna to do to it to make it something special. And it is gonna run alongside that one. That one's staying, not going anywhere. We're gonna do the two projects at the same time. So there we are, thank you for watching. Take it easy, ride safe. We'll see you next time.